All right, everybody. Hello and welcome. I cannot believe we are already getting ready for our spring 2023 internship kickoff. Um, we are so excited that you are joining us here tonight. And please note that this message is being recorded. Um, I had a few of you ask. I know you have to jump off. I completely understand. Um, this message is being recorded, so we will make sure that you have access to that. Um, so again, we just want to welcome you to our internship kickoff kickoff for spring 2023. Really quickly, with a quick round of introductions, we have a lot of people in the room. So in the chat, please share your name and program. Um, so really quickly in the chat, just share your name and program. Um, so we can just kind of get an idea of where everyone is from. Um, so again, really quickly in the chat, we have everyone here tonight for internship. And while we are doing that, I am going to ask, you're going to have two facilitators of tonight's oh, conversation. Um, please make sure you mute, you all. Um, so we're going to have two facilitators tonight, and I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Dr. Leslie Locklear. I work here um, at the UNCP School of Education, where I serve as the Director of Educator Engagement and Student Success, and I'm going to pop it to Dr. Dubisky. Hey, good afternoon, y'all. Thanks for carving out some time to be here with us for this very important meeting. I am Dr. Diana Dubisky, and I'm the Director of Teaching Fellows here at UNCP. Thank you, Dr. Dubisky. So I am going to share with you today really some high level things in regards to internship um, and really things that we want you to just be aware of ahead of time before we kick it off in January. There is a lot of information that we are going to give you at orientation, but what we realize is that we do not want to overwhelm you at that orientation. So the very first thing that I wanted to start off with is the circle of support. Um, our undergraduate students and our MAT students have two different circles of support. And you may be wondering, I don't know who to go to with these kind of questions. I'm not really sure. Um, so I wanted to be able to let you know who you go to with certain questions so that you are aware of that. So I want to start with my undergraduate students. Um, so for my undergraduate students, my name, of course, is Dr. Leslie Locklear. And if you have any questions regarding internship placement or logistics, I'm going to be the person you ask. Um, myself, as well as Miss Kimberly McMillan, are here in the Office of Educator Engagement and Student Success, and that is our primary role. Um, we also will be hiring Miss Erin e. Lowry, who will be joining us, and she will be providing some ed TPA support. You also will receive ed TPA support from your program coordinator. The next level of support you have is your university supervisor. So your university supervisor is going to be the person that does that on-site support. They are going to be doing your observations and you can come to them with any direct questions while you're in your internship setting. It's important to note that for some of you, your program coordinator and university supervisor are the same person. That's not the same for everybody, but just know that for some of you, that is the same person. And then the next level of support is going to be your clinical teacher. That is going to be the person that you're placed with, and you're going to spend about 15 fantastic weeks with this person in their educational setting. The, now I want to flip over to my MATs, and my MATs, I'm specifically speaking to you if you are a teacher of record. Okay, so if you are a teacher of record in a classroom, I'm specifically speaking to you. I will still serve as your primary point of contact regarding placement, logistics, confirming your internship, because even though you are employed in a school, we do have to notify the district and get approval for you to complete your internship. You also will have access to Miss Erin e. Lowry, who's going to be providing some intentional ed TPA support. You also will have your program coordinator who is going to provide ed TPA support. And then you will also have a university supervisor who has that on-site support, observations, and also direct questions. 
The difference between our undergraduates and MATs is our MATs, you all will be assigned a mentor teacher in your school if you do not already have one. That mentor teacher, again, will be another source of on-site support, observations, and direct questions. So we, again, just wanted you to be aware of what does my circle of support look like? Who is helping me walk through this process? Who do I go to with questions about whatever it may be? If all else fails and you're really not sure who to go to, I'm going to be very honest and tell you that you're the first and probably easiest person for you to contact is going to be either myself and or your program coordinator. Um, we can kind of send you in the right direction of where you need to go. If you have a great relationship with your program coordinator, I'm definitely gonna tell you they're going to be probably the easiest and quickest to contact. Um, and you can always use them if you're just like, I'm not sure, I just have a question, I'm not sure who to go to, they are going to be that initial person. So again, if you're just not sure who to go to, kind of use this as a guide of your circle of support, moving honestly from right now all the way through to graduation. The next thing that I wanted you all to be aware of, and I know I sent out an email about this, um, is the Hattie M. Strong Scholarship is open. This scholarship is solely for students that are completing internship and it is a $5,000 scholarship, a $5,000 scholarship. Um, you are all eligible. I have, I will provide this presentation to you, but I put the link here. If you wanted to take a quick picture and also look this up tonight, um, the deadline is December 15th. So it is imperative that if you are going to apply for this scholarship, that you get started as soon as possible. Um, like I said, it is a $5,000 scholarship and multiple will be handed out in the spring. So please take a look at this opportunity. We do not want this opportunity to go to waste. So I wanted to bring it to your attention um, as soon as possible. Um, I'm not going to be in front of you long. I am going to give a bulk of the time to, to Dr. Dubisky, but there are just a few things that I wanted to share around expectations. So the very first thing that I wanted to talk about is attendance. So you will be serving in a classroom setting full time. So for my undergraduate at undergraduate students, you are in this classroom setting full time Monday through Friday from the beginning of the workday to the end of the workday. OK, so again, you will be there full time. You cannot miss over two days in this setting before you have to make up days. Um, so there is an absence process that we will share with you, but it's imperative to know that I'm going to share a calendar next. I need you to plan accordingly um, because I don't want you to have to make up days in your internship. The second thing that I wanted to address is timeliness. It is extremely important that you are on time to your setting. So you would, will work with your clinical teacher to make sure um, that you know exactly what time you need to arrive, how long you need to stay. Again, you will be following the schedule of a teacher in that classroom. Um, another thing for my teachers of record. So yes, you are employed in a school setting. Please know that if you have attendance or timeliness issues, this also may warrant an action plan on your end as well. So we wanna make sure that you know that you have to be in attendance and you have to be timely in regards to your internship. This is extremely important. This is not a UNCP mandate. This is a North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. So we wanna make sure you're getting all of the hours in that setting. We also wanna make sure that we are good guests to our partners. So for my undergraduate students and my MATs placed with a clinical teacher, Remember that we are guests in that school setting, so we want to act accordingly. Um, I know that you all have completed field experience and you've completed um, experiences in the school setting, so that's going to be no issue at all, but just wanted to make you aware. The next thing that I'm going to show you is your internship calendar. Um, again, I'm going to provide this link to you. Do not worry if you can't capture it right now. But the most important thing is I need you to plan your spring schedule accordingly. OK, so for my undergraduates and my MATs with the clinical educator, it is important to know that you do not get spring break when UNCP gets spring break. You will get spring break when your school observes spring break. Um, so again, we just want you to plan accordingly. 
So here is a brief overview. And again, this is for specifically my undergraduate students and my MATs placed with the clinical educator. My BK folks, hold on just a second. You're next, okay? So I'm just gonna walk really quickly through it. So Monday, January 9th is the first day of classes here at UNCP, and that is going to be your orientation. So my undergraduates and my MATs placed with a clinical educator, that is going to be your orientation. You will then have program meetings and your first day of internship is going to be January the 11th. So again, that's coming super quick. In red, what you're going to see is going to be EdTPA task due dates. And again, Dr. Dubisky is going to share a little bit more about EdTPA. Another thing that you're going to see specifically on Friday, February the 3rd, you'll see that you're going to be pulled out of your school setting. So my undergrads and MATs with clinical educator, and we're going to do some deep dive sessions. You will be pulled out again on March the 13th for APD and all of the information about whether or not they are going to be in person or online is located right here on this calendar where it says location. So if you are an undergrad or an MAT placed with a clinical educator, this is going to be your schedule. Okay, and I'm going to provide a link to this. If you're not sure which one you are, I will share that information with you. We can ask me offline. The next calendar is going to be for my MATs, you are a teacher of record, or my BK online folks. So there are virtual options for you all because of the way your program is set up. Please note that your orientation is going to be on Tuesday, January the 10th, and it will be virtual. So again, you have here your residency, if you're a lateral entry, if you're an MAT teacher of record, or BK online, this is going to be your schedule. It's really important to note for my undergraduates that your professional development days that we come together, they are not optional, they are mandatory, okay? Your orientations are mandatory, as well as orientations here for our MAT teachers of records, BK online folks. All of those are mandatory. I think I saw a question about my TA program, my TA to teacher group. You are a separate program and I will provide um, information to you all separately, okay? So do not worry about that. You will get information separately. I will speak to your program coordinator. I'm gonna provide you a link to both of these calendars so that you will know exactly which calendar you follow. And if you have any questions about it, please be sure to let me know. Your last day of internship for everyone on here is going to be May 3rd. And we are going to have an end of semester celebration on May 4th. Okay, so we have the entire semester already planned out. So the next document that I'm going to share, um, and I'm going to drop the link to this document in your chat, is going to be critically important for out your entire time that you are in your internship. So this is what I call your intern info sheet. Um, Sorry, let me pull it up completely. Your intern info sheet is what I use to link all of your necessary information. And again, I'm gonna provide you a link to this. And I do ask that you bookmark this document, okay? I ask that you bookmark it. If you see here, it has a link to your respective calendar, the clinical practice handbook, your concern form, all of your EdTPA documents, presentations and recordings, all of this will be linked on this document right here. So again, I know we're gonna go in depth with all of this information at orientation. So we just wanted to give you an overview today, but I am gonna provide you with a link to this so that you have it and can start taking a look now um, and that you are ready to go by January. So I'll drop that in the chat in just a second. And then another way that I love to stay in touch with you all and keep you updated on anything that may be changing or happening is through the Remind app. Please take a second right now to join our Spring 2023 Intern Remind. All you have to do is go into your text messages. You're gonna send it to 81010 and it's gonna be at SPR23UNCP. Okay, 
So I will give you a second to join that remind. So again, this is just a way that I like to stay connected and send updated information to those. Um, it's just another easy way to stay updated on kind of the status of things and if we have any quick updates versus simply using email. So again, if you will bring up a text message box on your phone and you're gonna text 81010 and then in that text message, it's gonna be at spring23 at UNCP, okay? I don't think you're supposed to get a response. I'm looking now, I see, Holly, you're in. Oh, you got it, okay. So I can see as people join. So again, I'm gonna send out, Eric, it, it doesn't matter. You can be a teacher or a student. It's totally up to you. We're sending nothing super private. So that's totally up to you, whatever you decide. So I'll give you one more second. I see a few people still coming in. So again, this is just another way that we like to stay connected um, and I can easily shoot out information. Please note that this is linked directly to me. So sometimes I have students that say, I'm at school, I can't really call you. Can I send you a quick message on Remind? That is a great way to contact me um, if you need anything or need a quick question, okay? So with that, I am going to pause um, and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Dubisky, who is going to share information regarding EdTPA and give us a quick overview of EdTPA and how to prepare for January. Right, thank you. So I'm just going to do this. Um, without a presentation. Is that fine, Dr. Lockler? Okay, if I had a presentation, I feel like I would take a little bit more time than normal. So if you would, in the chat, let me know with a reaction. Are you overwhelmed already and you've not even started your spring semester? So give me an emoji. Let me know. Yes, I see some tears. Yes. Um, so definitely this is what I'm here to kind of help ease um, this stress. So are you with me? You gonna hang with me for just a little bit? So here's what this opportunity is about. As you go in, first of all, congratulations for making it to this point. You are almost done. So these faces, these green emojis, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe what I'm about to do. We should be turning them upside down. And hopefully after tonight, those emoji faces are a little bit a sigh of relief. So in this EdTPA component, most of you have maybe heard from your, your friends that it is um, a tremendous task. And I'm not gonna lie, it is a big task. But if we plan ahead and we understand the end in mind, you guys are gonna be successful. So here's what I wanna tell you. That calendar that Dr. Locklear just went through is key to success. You have to map out before you start your internship, what that internship is gonna look like. Let me talk to you about the different variables that's going to happen to you at one time. As you enter in this building or a building, you're gonna have your calendar, district's calendar. Recording calendar. in progress. You're gonna have a whole bunch of to-do lists and different outside variables that you cannot control. And I need you to have a firm understanding of what you can control and what you have to be able to control in order to be successful and graduate in the spring. And that is completing your EdTPA. On top of your clinical experience work, you will have to work on this EdTPA. And I need you to write this date down, April 4th. April 4th is the day that you will submit your EdTPA submission. It's non-negotiable, right? So we are all submitting April 4th successfully. And I'm gonna give you some tricks in order to be successful. You have an amazing support team here at UNCP. Dr. Locklear went through your chain of support. 
you need to know these people and you need to go to every single seminar, every event known to man that is there. It is non-negotiable. It is important for you to attend. So your ATPA, this is a general overview that you need to know. When you go into the classroom, before you can do any EdTPA work, one of the first things that you have to do is get EdTPA release forms submitted to the students, signatures, and returned back. When you meet with your clinical teacher, you've got to immediately say, hey, you might not know anything about the EdTPA, but I have to complete this component, and here's the form that I need you to send home with those students, and I need them back. We cannot make parents sign forms, but that is critical to you beginning your EdTPA. The EdTPA is a portfolio. It's made up of three components. Dependent on your content area and your program coordinator will go through this and your university supervisor. Your components might look a little bit different. Our elementary candidates have a task four, our BK candidates, special ed candidates, and our health and PE candidates, you have a different component as well. But overall, all of us complete a portfolio that has task one, task two, and task three. And I'm gonna generalize what this looks like. Task one is all about planning. You have to plan a three to five day lesson plan that you will actually facilitate, collect evidence, video, work samples from students, feedback, and connect it all. In your task one, it's all about what we call planning. You're planning with the end in mind. You're planning a lesson that is gonna be literacy integrating, looking at language support, looking at multimodal learning opportunities, looking at active engagement, rigor, and you have to write about it. You have to make these connections and write about why lesson one builds on lesson two and lesson three and, and therefore why you chose the learning experiences you did. There's a lot of writing that goes into it. So my key for task one, get that paperwork signed, talk to your clinical teacher because guess what they're going to do? They're gonna have a calendar, a pacing guide of events in the order in which things need to be done. So you need to be pre-thinking, looking at your calendar with your university supervisor, your program coordinator, and this EdTPA internship calendar and kind of saying, this is when my university supervisor wants this EdTPA work. Here's my timeline, due date of April 4th. Here's when I have my deep dive sessions. There's a lot of back and forth going on here. So we tell you these things because planning is important. Creating a calendar, knowing going into this work, what's coming ahead is important. Task two is all about video evidence. It is providing an opportunity to demonstrate video evidence. So if you've never worked with uh, a computer, or a device that collects evidence through videos, you need to make sure that you're working towards that. You'll be videoing you instructing a lesson, one of the lessons or clips of a lesson that you outlined in task one. You will have to compress videos. Well, Dr. D, I don't know how to even record a video. I don't even know what compression means. These are things I want you to kind of look into before you start the semester. You need a device that can house multiple documents and files. So if your computer is not one that is, uh, you know, that is going to hang in there for you, you need to make sure you have a thumb drive. You need to make sure you're storing your files on a cloud. You need to make sure that the computer that you're using is one that can open up and access these videos and documents needed as well as storing these documents for your EdTPA. So you need to make sure, um, where do we get these documents for EdTPA? 
So we're not giving out your EdTPA documents tonight. When you start, then you will get them with your program coordinator. There are handbooks um, and all of your EdTPA documents that are specific to the overall content area of your program. So task two is about video. You can't video unless you plan what you're gonna video, right? Here's the third component. It's very important. If you follow Grant Wiggins and McTighe, planning with the end in mind. Task three is all about evidence. And when you look at the assessment, as you plan for those three to five days, you are creating formal and informal assessments. This is how we progress monitor students, right? You will pick one assessment that all students will take and you will collect evidence, work samples, and then you're gonna analyze that evidence. Along the way in task two, you're providing two videos. You're gonna show yourself facilitating to a whole group and then you're gonna pick two students, two to three students that are your focus students. These are students that could have a learning disability, need additional assistance. They might be exceptional children from the spectrum of AIG all the way to students having a 504 or being um, an EL student. So you pick two of those focused students and you do a small group with them. So in that task three, when you're collecting evidence of student work, you're analyzing as a whole class what that assessment looks like and you're pulling out trends, you're pulling out areas that students did well and you're pulling out areas where students need improvement and you're writing about it. Each component, you're gathering and collecting artifacts and evidence, but you have what's called a commentary for each component, which is writing. It's where you have to utilize academic language you have to utilize research and you have to make those connections across the board. I say this, the task is tedious, but it is what you are going to be doing each and every single day in the classroom as an educator. It is what we do as educators each and every day. So I say that the task is big. The task has a lot of moving components. And if we don't understand all three components, we're gonna miss the mark somewhere. Our goal is that we hit a 37, if not higher on that EdTPA, but most importantly, that we submit by April 4th. When you get into that building, it is important that you have communication with your clinical teacher. That that area knows that you're gonna to have to video that you're gonna to have to be facilitating and working and pulling small groups and doing feedback sessions and collecting student artifacts. They need to know before you get started what that expectation looks like. Most importantly, you've gotta have a little bit of understanding. So there's these documents called Making Good Choices. There are also handbooks for EdTPA. There's going to be a handbook with academic language. And there's gonna be a handbook for how the actual score is gonna score your EdTPA. Those documents need to be your right-hand man. It tells you how to pass the actual portfolio, but you gotta read it. It's a lot of moving parts. As a university supervisor, do you know what most of my students don't do? They don't read their manuals and they don't plan ahead. So what I can tell you that I need you to do is have an idea moving forward. You're about to have a little bit of break, take a day or two, investigate those documents, look through them, but most importantly, create a calendar. Know when things are due because April 4th will be here before you know it. And when it comes down to writing a lesson plan, we can do that in the night but we have to actually facilitate and collect um, video and that we can't just make happen. Each and everything has specified components and requirements. So here's the other tedious component. It's gotta be stored a certain way, has to be a certain font, a certain file size, 
So there's all these little extra things that can make our life like a little bit difficult if we're not reading our handbooks. So I say this, and if you leave here doing nothing else as going into your final stages, you make good choices. And the good choices is creating an action plan of how you're going to get through your last and final semester. Student teaching is a lot. You've got your student teaching requirements, which your district, which your clinical teacher is gonna have you do on top of the field work of EdTPA. We're here to support you along the way. You're gonna have a phenomenal opportunity to meet um, soon to be Dr. Lowry, who will walk you through some amazing deep dive sessions with EdTPA, please go to them. Do not wait to the last minute to collect your evidence and to start this work. This work has to start immediately. In January, once you get in, get your feet wet, but start moving as quickly as you can through this process. So how do you do it? You start now. Look at their handbooks. Look at what's provided for you. Read through. Making good choices. Ed TPA says, what's the first thing that you need to do? It's all about time management in reading your man manuals. So how do I get started? I got to keep the end in mind. I got to know that I've got three components. This starts with planning, instruction, and assessment. And I need to have a firm understanding of how all three are cyclic. They're all combined together. So what we can't do, ladies and gentlemen, is just do task one and then task two and then task three. It's not linear, okay? So it's cyclic in nature. All three are working progress together. You can't plan without creating an assessment and you can't instruct without planning and creating those assessments. So it all has to be together. So that's kind of it, Dr. Locklear, unless you, you have any further things. Um, I'm definitely here to support anybody in any way, but we just wanted to give you this overview so that you're not hit with it on your first day, that you're kind of prepared for what's coming. Thank you, Dr. Dubisky. I am gonna I'm gonna show you all. I know Dr. Dubisky shared a few different things. Um, so I have dropped in the chat again the intern info sheet, but I want to pull it up so I can show you how to get to particularly one that I think you should read before January, and that's the making good choices. So if you pull up your intern info sheet, which I linked, please star it put it somewhere where you can access it um, and you click on EdTPA. Okay, here is a lot of information, okay? The documents making good choices, it's right here, okay? If you open it, please note that there are certain ones for certain programs. Um, so please make sure there's an overall one. There's a special ed, ELE math and ELE literacy. If, you're, if you fall outside of those, you can start right here with the making good choices. I would read this front to back, okay? So I'm gonna jump backwards. You are going to see ed TPA handbooks. Here are all the handbooks all of the handbooks, okay? So please make sure you have taken a look at your handbook. Um, I, again, would suggest reading it, taking a look at everything in it. And I had a few of you asking um, if you are teachers of record. Um, and again, you do not have to start getting your video permission forms until January. But if you are in a classroom right now and it's just burning your spirit, like spiritually, you're just like, I just wanna get it done now. Um, those are also, hold on, let me show you where they are, in video support documents, and you'll see video permission form, and then there's the Spanish version, okay? So again, if you are just rearing to go in these right now, again, if you are not a teacher of record, you should not be doing this right now, but please make sure for everyone else you are welcome to see those documents. They are all right there. So again, this is 
linked right from your intern info sheet, EdTPA, and it will bring you to this folder. Do not get overwhelmed. Um, I would start with the making good choices. So start with making good choices. That is going to give you a lot of clear information and then make sure you know how to access your handbook. Um, I did see one question in the chat that was really great. I know PSRC has a new curriculum and we had a question regarding um, the scripted lessons. So the short answer is that we know that you are a guest in a classroom and you have to use the curriculum that that district use. However, like Dr. Dubisky shared, your commentaries, the writing and the assessment, that is all your own. So while you may use that lesson plan and you will cite where that came from, um, all of that commentary information that you submit and the videos of you teaching are going to be all you. So I know you probably feel like, oh gosh, we have, it. it's very scripted. Remember that we, Dr. Dubisky and I each can pick up a scripted lesson and we are going to pull it out in very different ways because we are very different educators. So just because a lesson is scripted by the district does not mean that you have to feel like it's going to be just like someone else's. Um, if you are in a program and you all work very closely together um, with your peers, I do want to caution you, please be very careful about co-writing or co-constructing your EdTPA together. I want to be very clear that this should be your own individual work. Um, you are welcome to brainstorm and talk about things, but please be very careful about co-constructing work um, when it comes to EdTPA. Um, there are very dire implications for this, so please just be very careful with that. And, and Dr. Watley, if I could add, Mm -hmm. Your Ed TPA is not this show and pony dance. It is, here's a lesson plan. I'm going to show that I can write a lesson plan. I can align that lesson plan to an assessment that will assess students back to the desired results of that content standard. And can I provide evidence to show that through analysis of student work? through my facilitation of instruction through my videos. It's all about alignment. They're looking for, can you support students? Are you providing a differentiated environment for students? And really the alignment across the board in that in implementation of the planning, instruction, and assessment. So you're not looking for this wow lesson plan. That's not what we're here to do. So whatever the lesson plan is, use it, go with it. It's all about the support that works through those commentaries to prove the why. Why did you choose this specific learning activity and how is it going to support all students? And what are you gonna do based off of that analysis for next steps kind of moving forward? based off of what happened. So that's all that is, that's what we do. We plan, we teach, we assess, and then we reflect and we do it again. We plan, we teach, we assess, and we reflect. And so I've just been answering some questions in the chat. Um, so again, you can access those documents by visiting your intern info sheet, EdTPA. And then it literally says video support documents, okay? Yes, Brianna, that's the form I'm talking about, the video support documents. So again- Dr. Leslie, I have a question. Yes. It's my, I'm, I'm currently in a classroom as a resident to entry. So my classroom, my district already provides forms for them to sign to be able to be recorded. I can't use those. I have to use the one that's in NCPA. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. got it. Yeah, okay. I know Thank that's you. very frustrating because it's kind of like doing the double work. Um, I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure I had a clear understanding. Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. And I, I'm getting the question, is this form on Brave Web? No, the info sheet that I make for you, it's not a Brave Web form. I will send it out to you. I assure you, you're going to get this form so many times in email. It's going to drive you crazy. I send it out every single week. Um, but if you go ahead and link it, um, and the reason it's not on Brave Web is it's on Canva so that as I make updates to it, you don't have to constantly re-download it. So it's like a livable website, okay? So just save it somewhere, bookmark it. I've dropped it in the chat again. Um, so again, you will have that as well, okay? Um, Stephen, that is a great question. So our... Um, let me explain a little bit about the EdTPA difference between kind of those of you that keep students like I keep students all year. So my elementary folks, you keep students all year. Um, my secondary folks, you have a switch of room um, depending on what district you're in. So if you are in a district that does a switch, you will work with your program coordinator and your university supervisor if you need to change, alter, figure out some of your ed tpa okay so of course if you go in in january and you still have students from the fall but you're going to be doing a switch in two weeks those are not going to be your ed tpa students so you are going to have to wait until you do that switch so my secondary folks don't freak out i know your death your timeline is just a little smidgen bit different but i assure you your program coordinator and as well as our in with ed tpa support we will walk you through all of that um, Reem, that's a great question. No, if you are if you are special ed, only a certain students will sign that form, but for everybody else, it's going to be all the students in the entire class. Um, in terms of recording, so there's kind of two different formats. We have some folks that record with their phone and they set it up on a tripod, but we also have Swivel here and Go React. And at orientation, we will go over all of those tools and how to use them but you will be recording yourself like you are performing a YouTube video. <laughs> so and, you and will I be think, recording. Mm -hmm. I think an easy way too is using your laptop, turning your laptop around, using WebEx, using Zoom, whatever the capability that you have, that way it's storing on your device. Please be careful if you ask a, another teacher, a clinical teacher or mentor to video for you, they now have it downloaded on their phone, their device. They try and send it to you. You can't download it. You can't compress it. Um, you're, you know, those kind of things can happen. So you want to kind of practice with this, right? You want to practice videoing before you actually are videoing that lesson. Um, when you video, you're only submitting a small piece of this entire lesson. So what you can do, you can cut before and you can cut after, but that learning segment in between has to be consistent. So what I say is if you've created a three-day lesson, video those three days that you are going to teach them and then go back through that video footage and find the five minutes, the 10 minutes, the seven minute specification because each content area is different and what you need to submit and what they're looking for and what's gonna be the best piece of evidence. And Allison, um, I would suggest first, read Making Good Choices in your handbook. I know you have some questions about your lesson plans. Um, those are gonna be program specific questions and we don't wanna dig into that um, tonight. So we just wanted you to give an overview, but I assure you your program coordinator can address those questions. Mm -hmm. Um, Felicia, if you take a look at the intern info sheet, you can access that um, your start dates and your finish dates the, on those calendars. And if you are a MAT student, you're going to follow the MAT calendar. Okay. So again, if, if you're just confused about um, that, please let me know. The BK program coordinator is Dr. Sandra Potter. The MAT special ed coordinator, I think I've got a question about that, is Dr. Marissa Scott. Okay. 
So I think the most important thing is making sure you're taking a look at the right calendar. And if you have any questions about that, let me know. For my TA to teachers, I'm speaking now with your program coordinator because I need clarification on some of your program requirements. So give me a little halt on that. But either way, no matter what your orientation is going to be, one of those two days in your first day of internship will be January the 11th. Okay, I know that really doesn't matter to you all because you're in the classroom anyway, but I will get that answer to you as soon as possible. Okay, yes, Rachel. Quick question for you, can you hear me? Um, mm -hmm. T, uh, for, since we did our field experience and our clinical practice in one school, is that gonna be the school we're gonna get placed with and with the same teacher? That or? is my request. Okay, mm -hmm. I just wanted to double check. Mm -hmm. And just, I've had a question about placements. Those are going out this week. Um, and I am encouraging our districts to get them to me as soon as possible. I can only rush a district so much. Um, so I am requesting those as soon as possible. They will be updated in the Brave Educator dashboard once I have that placement. So again, that will be in the Brave Educator dashboard when your placement is confirmed. Yes, Brianna. Hi, thank you. Um, so, you know, I'm a TA, but I'm not in the TA teacher program. Mm -hmm. So do I just follow the undergraduate dates and I'll need to take off those days for the orientations? Yes, or... if you are in a undergraduate program, not the TA to teacher program, yes. And Brianna, this has looked different from some of our TAs in the past. Some of them, um, their teachers are their schools are willing to work with them um but we can have an offline conversation about that okay thank you i really appreciate it no problem yes brianna the other brianna um question i live in wayne county i don't live in robinson county i was just making sure that you got my field placement paper to be put with that teacher and what school i was at is this for internship or yes. field experience? Sorry, internship, sorry. Yeah, if you put it in the dashboard, I got it. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Abigail, are you MAT or undergrad? Undergrad is Dr. Jennifer Whittington. Michaela. Hey, my grade is wrong on the Brave Ed Educator dashboard. My teacher moved grade levels. Does that matter? Can I just? Yes, that does matter. And I need to know, can you email me that? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Miss Brianna Lynch, I wanted to let you know I do have it. I was just double checking for Wayne County. Okay, thank you. Mm hmm So I, I think I want to make sure you all know, um, definitely please know who your program coordinator is, because this is going to be one of the people that probably has more e immediate conversations with you um, and that you may hear from. Please make sure you know who that person is. If you don't, please type in the chat right now and me and Dr. Dubisky will make sure you know. Okay. Miss Takesha, yes, I have yours. I Give me a little more information than I don't know. Let me know your program and whether you're undergrad or MAT. And I need your program, okay? And let me, I think it might be helpful if I just pull up the whole list. No, Jordan, it's not the same as your advisor. I'm gonna pull up a list so that you all can see it really quickly. MAT Elementary Ed is Kelly Ficklin. Ms. Lockyer, I have one question. Yes. If we work for a year round charter school and we're going to be out for those two weeks that we're supposed to be in internship, how is that going to affect us? Is, that, is this Miss Rebecca? It is. Miss Rebecca, can you send me a message? Because we need to have an offline conversation. Sure will. So I'm going to share with you right now, team, please take a look. 
this, these are the coordinators right here. So you will see here is your undergraduate programs and your coordinators and then your graduate MAT programs. Please know right now who your program coordinator is. Can you zoom in on that? Can I? I, I can, I'm sure I can. Dr. Give me one second, y'all. I promise I, I just um can't multitask. Click on view, Miss Dr. Locklear. I clicked on it. Oh. Yeah, right. it's I was gonna just try to um do my zoom. It's not gonna. Maybe at the top of your screen, the view at the top. Do you have not a view like do you have another view like at the very top of your screen? On your command computer. plus. Hey, command how plus. About, how about I just share it with you in the chat? I don't know what. Nope, it's not going to let me. Where's my plus? I promise I'm not computer illiterate. I'll just download a copy. It's not letting me on the OneDrive. So again, I do want to make sure you know, I think I saw somebody else who said that they um, that they were in a school that was um, that was um, split timing. So that conversation will also be held with your program coordinators and your university supervisors. We've had this before, so I don't want you to freak out. Um, we, it is possible, it can be done. We just have to kind of negotiate what that will look like. Okay, so I have your program coordinators pulled up. Let me share that one more time. Um, Jessica, for some of them, it's the same. I'll share that again. You'll see it here. For some of them, it's not the same. So just make sure you know what program you're in because this is also going to tell you what handbook you follow and all of that information, okay? So please just make is sure you- Is the university supervisor, are, are they gonna be different from school to school? It depends on the program. Some of our larger programs, we have multiple university supervisors. Yep. Okay. If you are having trouble getting up with anybody, please email me. Please email me. So again, MAT Elementary Education is Dr. Kelly Ficklin. If you are in a year round school, please do not fret. You, um, your program coordinator and your university supervisor will assist you with adjusting that schedule, okay? Do not fret. So I'm noticing our time. Um, we did commit to an hour and I wanna respect your time. Um, do we have any final questions? I'm taking a look at the chat. Again, we will make this recording available. Gregory, um, can you talk to me offline because I did not receive your background check documentation for Cumberland County. Katrina, you will not get an email about the dashboard, just kind of check it. Reg I will try to send out an email when we get our first round of approvals um, and just let folks know that it's in the dashboard, but give it, I would say, don't even look in the next three weeks, okay? So if you're having specific questions about your documents, your background check documents, they should all be, um, you can check your Google Drive folder, okay? Trelina, I will take a look at your email and get back to you, okay? And Ronnie, the way I do the recordings is that I will post everything that we share. Um, I will show you where it will be at. On your intern info sheet, you'll see right here, 
presentations and recordings. So I drop everything in one folder that you can easily access right here under presentations and recordings. Um, Takesha, I don't, can you come off mute and share? Cause I don't think I understand. Can we make copies? You know, like um, I'm in my pre-internship now, so we're practicing the ed TBA. I just did my recording myself while I actually had to do the lesson plan and use all the stuff. Is it any way, because some of the questions were really difficult for me to understand. I don't know if everybody else have actually looked at the document. So Dr. H is my advisor. She's the bomb. So we got a whole book. We didn't print all the stuff in there. She gave it all to us. We printed it. I'm going through it. But some of the assessment stuff, I feel like I'm taking up a lot of her time. She don't mind. So I may just go down and sit with her. But for some other people, they may want to go ahead and print those test documents out and read the question to make sure they understand the question. Do y'all offer that there? Like a, a day where you can come in and you can actually ask questions about the questions? So we'll have EdTPA deep dive sessions and you'll see that on your calendar. And that's when right. you'll ask all those questions. Mm -hmm. So we will have separated time for you just to talk about that ATPA during those deep dive sessions. Mm -hmm. All right, and Dante, I did check, you're still on my list. If you're still not receiving my emails, let me know. I sent out another one um, and I will double check. Dr. Dubisky, any final comments, concerns, prayer requests from you? Nate, I just think that you need to, uh, Takesha, you, you said it right. You need to dive through those documents. Um, it's a lot. Um, so with that said, you have all the support you need here at the School of Education at UNCP. You've got to communicate. You got to ask questions and you cannot wait to the last minute. Um, so get that planner out, whatever it's going to take to plan. This is your last semester. Congratulations. This should be a happy time. So make sure that you put your, you know, best foot forward as you prepare moving through the holidays so that you can start out the new year um, very successful. Yes, yeah, so I can assure you we sat down um, with over 100 interns two weeks ago to do EdTPA submission. It was a fantastic night. Um, you are going to make it there. Hands down. We have no worries. Um, but we do want you to be prepared for. Um, kind of that information ahead of time. We realized in the spring that we started you out at orientation with all of this information and then we were like, go forth and flourish. Um, so we wanted to back it up a little bit and say, hey, let's give you a heads up, kind of wrap your mind around it, give you an opportunity to speak with your program coordinators, get any questions out of the way, okay? So our final question, Brianna. I was just letting you know that I teach at the same school as Miss Rebecca Sibbett, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't need to talk to you in private. Oh, no, you'll, we'll make sure that your um, university supervisors know. So don't fret it yet. Don't, okay. actually don't fret it at all. I didn't mean to say that. Don't fret it at all, okay? So again, okay. thank you all for joining us. Um, offline, if you need anything from me, please know that this week we are working intently on sending out um, placement requests and that is my priority. So if I don't get back to you immediately, please know that that is why. But if you are missing anything and I can't request your placement, we will follow up and get whatever we need from you. You will hear from myself or Miss Kimberly McMillan, okay? But otherwise, thank you all so much. I will make this recording available and follow up with an email. Have a fantastic night. Thank you.